10 years after 9-11. So we've had it shoved down our throat that Islam's a religion of peace. It's not. It never has been and it never will be. Many believe that Western civilization remains under attack. It's an authoritative political system involving dominance and the subjugation of non-Muslims. And they believe it's time to fight back. They are a growing network of organizations on both sides of the Atlantic opposing the spread of Islam. They're willing to strap bombs to their children. It's a network fueled by fear. Some of it arguably legitimate, but much of it unfounded. You're not going to let some death cult from the Middle East come and take over America. It's a well-designed fear network. They think that Muslims are the threat to America. In reality, they themselves are the greatest threat to America. On this episode of Vanguard, we go deep inside an anti-Islamic network that appears to be growing in both size and strength. In England, we meet the charismatic leader of the English Defense League. It's not a single Muslim problem, it's every single one of them is a problem. and joined the EDL on its most provocative street protest to date. Uh, there are several thousand members of the EDL here. Here at home, we go undercover to see how these groups are teaching Americans to fear their Muslim neighbors. What do you say to the legions of Muslim Americans who listen to your message and say, she is at war with us? Oh, no. Would they say that to me on 9-11? What do I stand racism, for? What do you stand for? How's it racism? Hey. How's it racism? How's it racist to oppose a fascist ideology? Fascist ideology? This fascist. What are you? You're racist. How am I racist? I, I, I heard. Come on, Clown. Where, where, where are you running away oh, from? Oh, because I know you, you I, I'm not going to know what you like, bruv. You have about 100 you in a minute. You fing look cheap. Let's be honest, it's not single Muslim, problem, it's every single one of them is a 28-year-old Tommy Robinson is the leader of the English Defense League, a group that organizes large public demonstrations opposing the spread of militant Islam in the UK. We know that every man and woman in any working class community agree with us here. They support us. They can't do it publicly, many of them. They're fearful of losing their jobs. Um, everyone's there. God bless you, Tommy! God bless you! Every man and woman in any working class community Tommy is in South End, England, speaking to a local chapter of the EDL. The organization is less than two years old, but has already garnered a rather notorious reputation. Its thuggishness is well documented. YouTube is full of alarming evidence from EDL protests that have turned violent. Including this footage from Leicester in 2010, when EDL members stormed a fast food restaurant where local Muslims were dining. Although no one was hurt, the EDL's message was loud and clear. Tommy has recently announced plans to lead the English Defence League into Tower Hamlets, the largest Muslim neighbourhood in London. I know I'm angry one, I'm angry. And as I said, if I thought going into Tower Hamlets and smashing the place up would solve the problem, or it would even help the problem, I'd be the first person to say that's what we need to go and do. But that is not what we need to go and do. We need to harness our anger, channel our anger, and be peaceful, because the entire world is watching. 
to beat the Goey and Peace Week protest and show them for the barbaric, violent animals that they are, then that's our goal. Thirty miles north of London lies the old factory town of Luton, where Tommy grew up, and where he now owns a tanning salon. Tommy doesn't own a personal computer. He comes into the tanning shop to correspond with his growing legion of supporters. That is, when he's not doing television appearances. Well, joining me from Luton now is the joint leader of the English Defence League, Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson, thanks for joining us. You keep saying that the Quran is an evil book. Uh, I didn't say that, but I will agree with you on that, but I didn't say that. People are realising now this facade that Islam is a religion of peace is absolute rubbish. It's not a religion of peace. It never has been. It never will be. Mainstream England has been quick to dismiss Tommy and the EDL as bigoted, far-right nationalists. Prime Minister David Cameron recently called the organization sick and its members terrible people. When you walk around town, do you get stopped? Do cars slow down? What happens? Usually, I, any cars that have got Muslim, Muslim youth going in past, they all give it the gun fingers, tell me I'm dead. They're going to do this to my family, that to my family. You feel like a marked man here? I am a marked man, yeah. I don't feel like I am a marked man, yeah. I'm just stating the obvious. Everyone in the country is thinking it. Islam in this country has failed. That's it, it's failed. Tommy's brand of open hostility towards Islam has been spreading for some time in Europe. And more recently, here in the United States. The city of Yorba Linda in Southern California is often included on those lists of the best places to live in America, and for good reason. It's wealthy, it's safe, it has good schools. But on the night of February 13th, 2011, something very ugly happened here. As local Muslims arrived at an Islamic Charities fundraiser, they were met by scores of angry protesters. It was pure bigotry, and its target was any Muslim within shouting distance. Last time I was here was that night. Just being here right now, it's a little bit surreal. Afad Sheikh is a 28-year-old law student who was working for the Council of American Islamic Relations at the time. He shot the flip cam footage of the Yorba Linda protesters that you just saw. As soon as I parked, I noticed that there was a whole group of people, close to 100 people or so, who were chanting. And at first, I couldn't make out what they were chanting. Um, but as soon as I got my stuff together out of the car and came towards the entrance, you could clearly hear they were chanting, you know, go home terrorists. That chant was not directed at Afad. At least, not initially. Brothers and sisters, the protest began in opposition to the fundraiser's two keynote speakers, one of whom has been linked to extremists, and another who openly sympathizes with Hamas and Hezbollah, groups that the U.S. government classifies as terrorist organizations. 
It's one thing to say that you disagree with the speaker, and a whole nother to blanketly and generally accuse an entire community. What about a six-year-old child or a three-month-old baby? If you're yelling and t telling her she's a terrorist, that she's a murderer, I mean, I'm being told that this isn't my country. I don't know how to respond to that. What began as suspicion of two Muslim speakers quickly grew into suspicion and outright disgust for an entire Muslim community. A lot of folks didn't want to admit that this existed in, in, in our society, but that video conclusively showed that there is this element. Coming up... They're willing to strap bombs to their children! We explore the roots of America's new fear of Islam. It's a 15-story middle finger to the American people. And the origins of the English Defense League. On September 11th, 2001, Al-Qaeda terrorists attacked the United States, killing nearly 3,000 people in a single day. They did so in the name of Islam. Many predicted an immediate anti-Muslim backlash. It didn't happen. I also want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faith. It's practiced freely by many millions of Americans and by millions more in countries that America counts as friends. You can say a lot of things about George Bush, but what you can't say is that he was a bigot. Reza Aslan is an Islamic scholar who's written extensively about America's relationship with the Muslim world. Even at the height of Bush's evangelizing foreign policy, like at the, the height of the us versus them, good versus evil rhetoric, at no point was there this sense that the American Muslim community uh, was anything other than uh, America's greatest asset. This same community, however, has found itself increasingly the object of suspicion in more recent years. A survey conducted in 2011 by the Public Religion Institute revealed that half of Americans now consider Islam incompatible with American values. The question is, what changed? On the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, the eyes of the world were once again on New York. At Ground Zero, television cameras from around the world captured the ceremony honoring the memory of the victims. Who with his sparkling blue eyes and infectious smile is greatly missed and deeply loved every single day. Two blocks north, another gathering struck a very different tone. And if you don't have a God on your side, trust me, they have a God they're willing to die for. They're willing to strap bombs to their children for. The Freedom Rally, as it was called, was organized by Pamela Geller, the co-founder of Stop Islamization of America, considered a hate group by the Anti-Defamation League. I want to thank all you brave patriots for coming out. Geller was an obscure right-wing blogger until 2010 when she began mobilizing opposition against a proposed Islamic community center, or what she called... This mega mosque. Mega mosque. Mega mosque at Ground Zero. Although the site wasn't at Ground Zero, it was the perfectly packaged controversy. It provided Geller a seemingly boundless platform to depict the proposed Islamic center and Islam itself as a threat to America. It's a 15-story middle finger to the American people. It's encroaching Islamic supremacism. This explicit, unapologetic connection between Al-Qaeda terrorists and America's Muslim community, that is what was unprecedented. That was the kind of rhetoric that would have been inconceivable a couple of years ago. It's a huge 
beach truck bombs last fall. But it was a connection that resonated. Bolstered by daily news reports of suicide bombings abroad and new terror plots hatched right here at home. Some successful. Authorities say the shooter is 39-year-old Major Nadal Malik Hassan. Others, thankfully not. No one here has been hurt but an extremely suspicious vehicle found in Times Square. Geller's alarmist rhetoric began to spread. No, there will never be a mosque at ground zero so you're saying any community if they want to ban a mosque yes they have the right to do that congressman peter king echoed geller in justifying his controversial decision to hold hearings on the radicalization of american muslims the threat right now to this country is coming from within the muslim american community in this environment the building of new mosques anywhere became reason for suspicion regardless of their distance from ground zero a proposed mosque here in Temecula. In the middle of Tennessee, a group of Muslims... They believe arson is the cause of an overnight blaze that heavily damaged a house of worship. Crews spent much of last night at the scene of the Islamic center of Marietta. As these news clips attest, Islamophobia in America is on the rise. This is Luton, our story, yeah? The most prominent thing and the tallest thing in the skyline that I see there is the top of a mosque. I mean, that's not our story. That's not our town's story. To us, this mural in the heart of Luton looked rather innocuous. But to Tommy Robinson, head of the English Defence League, it paints what he believes is a rather sinister portrait of the town where he grew up. What does it say? It says that Islam dominates the town. That's what it does say, and to me anyway. But that's that's the message we get. Is that what you think is going to happen to this town? It's gonna. It is going to happen. It's happening. It's already happening. Across England, Muslims account for around three percent of the population. Here in Luton, they're a bigger presence, at around fifteen percent. The majority arrived poor from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and India, in the decades after World War II. Though they settled in working-class neighborhoods, integration into wider British culture has been a struggle. This has led to alienation, and in some cases, radicalization. So where we're standing here, effectively, is where the EDL was born. This is where it was born, yeah. This is where it was born, for good reasons as well. In March of 2009, Tommy attended a homecoming parade for British soldiers returning from the Afghan war. Their families were here to pay their respects. The community was here to pay their respects. As they approached along here, they, they got up by the town hall. They were met by um, abuse. They were spat at. They called baby killers, murderers, rapists, um, butchers of Basra, etc., etc. And they- By who? By a group of local British-born Muslims, many of them. Tommy pointed us to this footage of the incident posted on YouTube. So you're standing here watching this parade. Standing here watching, yeah. And what is going through your head? Just despair, mate. It's sickening. My stomach's churning. Just That's the bad. moment they said, well, we can't have this. As a community, we can't have this. From that town centre in Luton, the EDL grew quickly. Tommy tapped into similar frustrations in other working class towns and organized more than two dozen protests across the country. Tommy's aim? To end Muslim immigration and to protect the English way of life. We want what's right in this country and the spread of Islamism is not right and no one's tackling it, no one's talking about it. And you're not going to solve the problem by brushing it under the carpet and building more mosques and bigger mosques. It's a problem that everyone wants to pretend they near. Coming up, we go undercover to get a lesson on Islam. It's one of those things that when you start learning about it, you go, oh my gosh, we've got to do something about this. This is a serious threat. It's a Monday night in October, and we've come to a community center in Mission Viejo, California, 
to ostensibly learn about Islam. How many uh, here have uh, zero knowledge at all of Islam? It's one of those things that when you start learning about it, you go, oh my gosh, we've got to do something about this. This is a serious threat. Welcome to Act for America, a nationwide organization with more than 600 local chapters dedicated to educating the general public and elected officials about the dangers of Islam. Its national leaders refused to give us an interview, so we sent producers with undercover cameras to see what was being taught. And wolf and sheep clothing is really what they are. In reality, political agenda is to overthrow our system. We're not racist. I call, tell people we're a love-based organization. We love America, we love our neighbors, we love our freedoms, we love our constitution. And uh, you're not going to let some cult, death cult from the Middle East come and take over America. Chapter leaders then introduced the night's featured speaker, a retired U.S. Navy commander who begins a PowerPoint presentation about Islam's true aims in America. Uh, so this stealth jihad, it really works like an iceberg. Uh, there's a one-eighth of it or so that's visible above the surface, but there's eight-ninths of us that we don't see. It's down out of sight. The lecture relies heavily on paranoid drawings that connect every major American Muslim organization to terrorism. But the ultimate scare tactic comes later with this slide. What are Islam's intentions? I want to establish Sharia law as governing all of us Americans. And then uh, they want to rule the U.S. as an Islamic theocracy. And then we will find ourselves in a situation where we will be forced either to convert to Islam or be killed. Act for America was one of the groups that mobilized opposition to the Islamic fundraiser in your Belinda that night. Although the organization condemned the incident, just as it does whenever hateful acts are directed at the Islamic community. You mean if you want to? It's not hard to see where good, patriotic Americans might learn to fear their Muslim neighbors. The of American mosques are probably 80 to 90% of them. Every mosque in America can be suspicious of And I quite mosque in my community. This wasn't some rogue lecture either. In her many speeches posted on YouTube, Act for America founder, Brigitte Gabriel, preaches a similar paranoia about the country's internal Muslim threat. Terrorist cells are now set up and operating in all major cities in the United States. If you live in the city of Denver today, you have shaken hands with a terrorist, you have exchanged money with a terrorist, you maybe have sat next to a terrorist in a movie theater, between 180 million to 300 million Muhammad Atas who are willing to strap bombs on their bodies, walk into this building and blow us all up to smithereens. In her crusade to defend America against Islam, Brigitte is spearheading a state-by-state -state movement to try and ban Sharia, or Islamic law. The movement has already been successful in a handful of states, and many others are considering similar restrictions. This is not about a legitimate fear of a foreign law taking hold in America. The fear of Sharia is shorthand for fear of Muslims. That's all this is about. It's about this idiotic propaganda that any minute now, uh, every woman in America is going to have to wear the hijab and we're going to start stoning people. We actually have an amendment banning Sharia in the United States. It's called the Constitution. The situation is more complicated in England, where it's estimated that 85 Sharia courts operate outside the British legal system. I swear by Allah. I swear by Allah. This video provides a rare glimpse inside one such court in London. These courts use Islamic law to settle family and financial disputes much the way Jewish or canon law are used in other religious communities. 
I never punish you. I will give you my everything you want. But controversy has followed these courts because historically, women are not treated equally under Sharia, raising the possibility that decisions made behind closed doors might conflict with British laws and values. What are they? The spread of Sharia courts has also become a major talking point for Tommy Robinson, who views them as proof of the radicalization of British Muslims. Women are not, women are not possession, so having no to Sharia. And your fear is that they're trying to implement that? They are implementing it, and they're forcefully implementing it. Going into the women in the shops and saying, you better cover your hair or we'll kill you. Sharia law. They censor what you see, covering over billboards. Sharia law. Beating up homosexuals. Sharia law. If you look at all of them, all of them are aspects of Sharia law. Like his counterparts in the US, Tommy believes he's defending his country from an internal threat. Well, folks, thanks so much for showing up. It's appreciated. As you know, this is the, uh, the last meeting before Tower Hamlet's like, you know, the big one. On this night, he's at another bar, speaking to another local chapter of the EDL, rallying support for the big protest on Saturday. I'm really angry at what's happened to the country. I'm really angry at what I see in my hometown. And when I read the stories of what's happening to non-Muslim community, I'm really angry. Coming up, tensions in Luton turn violent. So why don't you say it now? Yeah. Ideology, it's got no place. Yeah. No, what do you How's it racism? Yeah. How's it racist to oppose a fascist ideology? You look cheap. They talk about the burqa. So you've got burqas just everywhere. Everywhere. They've got no place in modern society, burqas. The burqa's just a complete... That to integration, that to Britain. On the eve of the EDL's march into London's Tower Hamlets, Tommy Robinson took us on a tour of another neighborhood much closer to his home. This area here, I used to come down this area with my mum when I was younger. I used to go shopping. This area now is literally just a complete Muslim area. It's got 19 mosques all within a stone's throw. And plans for another six. So driving through this area, are you unwelcome here? Oh yeah, I'm completely unwelcome here, yeah. What would happen if you were to walk through the streets here? If I was walking the streets, I'd get bad. If I tried to walk from one end to the other, I wouldn't get out. Because they get on their phones so quickly. They're safe for Islam. That one there. That's, yeah, he's the leader. Yeah. What? What have I got to talk to you about? What have I got to talk to you about? What have I got to talk to you about? What have I got to say about Islam and that, innit? Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So why didn't you say it now? What do you want me to say? It's yeah? It's ideology. It's got no place. Yeah? yeah it's got no place, bruv. And what have you Shabbat got? Shabbat law's got no place what in this you country. Got? What do you mean, what have I got? Go on, tell me, innit? What, what, what do you stand for? What do I stand for? Yeah, what do you stand, stand for? Stand for integration, bruv. I don't stand for paedophilic practices, yeah? Yeah. What do you stand for? Go on, tell me. What do you mean, what do I stand for? What do you stand for? How's it racism? How's it racism? How's it racist to oppose a fascist ideology? Fascist ideology? What do you? You're racist. How am I racist? You hate what, Asians, what, what yeah? Racist, what race are yeah, Asians? Yeah. What race are Muslims? I, I, I heard. Come on, Cal. What are you running away from? Oh, because I know, you, I, I know, I know what you like, brother. You have about 100 you in a minute. <laughs> you fucking little chief. You fucking chief. <laughs> prick. You see? That is, that is Islam. You fucking little prick. The thing is, you get out of this car, they'll be here from everywhere. Watch, watch. Watch how many of them now turn up. Watch. Watch how many of them now turn up. I'll do, I'll do your window up so you can't get out, because I'm telling you, look. Pussy. What's my get with your fing house is your fing mug? Fing tramp. That is what they like, you see? Now you understand, innit? Do you think that that man is usually a nice, tolerant person? Do you think that he's bringing his children up to be tolerant towards our children? No. Do you know what I mean? He's telling them that we've got the devil in us, etc., etc. We're all going to burn in hellfire. So when we say we're living amongst Islamist, fanatical, Sharia-driven scum who wish to completely destroy this nation, you just met one of them. 
The confrontation in Luton only fuels Tommy's crusade, though he does not physically retaliate. Tommy says he does not believe in using violence. Another young man, equally intent on defending Europe, felt differently. 3.26 p.m., a massive car bomb shatters downtown Oslo. Shortly after that bombing at the government offices, a gunman opened fire on a youth camp. At least 84 people have been killed in a shooting spree out of Oslo. On July 22, 2011, breaking news reports introduced the world to Anders Breivik. Breivik intended his murderous rampage to start an anti-Islamic revolution in the Western world. It didn't take long for the origins of Breivik's views to emerge. In his 1,500-page manifesto, Breivik cited extensively from American blogs to justify his actions, including Pamela Geller's. He also claimed to have met with certain EDL leaders in person and counted more than 600 of its members as friends on Facebook. Presumably, you've also read his listing on one of your forums. Hello to all you good English men and women. Just wanted to say you're a blessing to all in Europe in what these date was dark this? days. This was before his manifesto was released, so you can see that his Indeed opinion... Indeed it was. It was almost the last thing he published before he disappeared to make his bombs. Tommy denied that the EDL had ever had any official contact with Breivik. There is no, there is no connection with us. The man is a monster. But at the same time, people need to wake up and realise, across Europe, there is a simmering anger and frustration and fear at what is happening with the Islamification of Europe. On the day before the march, these signs could be seen hanging throughout Tower Hamlets. For many, the lesson learned from the massacre in Norway was that rhetoric like Tommy's may have dire consequences. Coming up, Tommy goes undercover to evade the police as the EDL storms London. On the morning of the English Defense League's most provocative protest in its two-year history, Tommy Robinson is at a local bar, disguising himself. The EDL's founder has been banned from participating in his own organization's events, the result of an earlier arrest for allegedly assaulting a police officer. <laughs> that actually that looks really good. good. It does actually look pretty good. Tash. Tommy's absurd solution? To pose as an Orthodox Jew. He plans to slip past the police at the protest and deliver a speech to his supporters, an act he knows will get him arrested. Oh my God. Do you really think that they're not gonna... Does it look good? Across town, I've met up with close to a hundred EDL members who will travel together to London. The mood is festive, almost like a tailgate before a big game. Muslims, off all. <laughs> Muslims, off all out of our country. In similar fashion, local EDL chapters all across the country gather in pubs and parking lots. Soon they will all converge in London. Well, ready, peeps?
escorted every single step of the way to the protest site. The police have essentially shut down this particular subway stop just so that they can get these members to the protest site without creating too much chaos outside. Above ground, the authorities prepare. Three thousand police officers in riot gear have cordoned off the protest site. An attempt to separate the thousands of EDL members from an equally large and emotional counter-protest. Sadistic Sharia law It's our hands. So if I decided to make my own laws, free birth for everybody, you think they'd live up to that? No, I don't think so. The first man up to speak to you today, you all know him, you all love him. We will not allow our democratic rights to be eroded because of Islamism. The more Islam, the less freedom. Islam rules by intimidation and violence. We are standing here today say we have had enough of Islamism. We have had enough. Understand that we have built a network from one end of this country to the other end. And the Islamic community will feel the full force of the English Defence League if we see any of our citizens killed, maimed or hurt on British soil ever again. <laughs> Look, a, lot, a lot of people, a lot of people like to say... Am I getting arrested for my Democratic vote? Am I actually? Am I getting arrested for my Democratic vote? In the chaos that followed, Tommy's supporters helped him avoid arrest. But only temporarily. That evening, back in Luton, police arrested the EDL leader for breaking the conditions of his bail. Tommy spent eight days in jail, then released this video blog about his, quote, political imprisonment. These tactics are being used now in order to stop us grow growing. They're simply to try and suppress what we're saying. Um, someone upstairs wants us to stop talking about the religion of peace, Islam, and we won't stop talking about it. We will continue to ex um, expose it for what it is, which is not religion of peace. It never has been and never will be. Coming up, we head to Beverly Hills to meet the American face of the anti-Islam movement. Are, aren't we in danger of blanketing an entire religion, an no. entire population of the world? I don't think so. Uh, forgive me if I don't pat on the back every person that doesn't want to kill me. I, I, I don't congratulate every Muslim that doesn't want to blow himself up. We're in Beverly Hills because Pamela Geller won't give us an interview. I want to thank all you 
She said she was too busy to speak with us at the Freedom Rally she hosted on the anniversary of 9-11. Since then, she stopped returning our emails. As a last resort, we decided to approach Geller after her speaking event, where she was promoting her new book, Stop the Islamization of America. Surprisingly, she agreed to go on camera. There are 1.5 billion Muslims around the world who are good people, who, who don't want to inflict terror, who don't want to impose Sharia law in, in the extreme forms that you talk about, stoning and, and, and honor killings and whatnot. Are, aren't we in danger of blanketing an entire religion, an no. entire population of the world? I don't think so. I'm fighting an ideology. You know, I'm, I'm not fighting a person. And forgive me if I don't pat on the back every person that doesn't want to kill me. I, I don't congratulate every Muslim that doesn't want to blow himself up. I expect that. And you say it's an extreme few. I don't agree with you. I mean, even if it's 10%, it's hundreds of millions. We, we see daily attacks of jihad. We see daily slaughter across the world. You say it's hijacked, but it's, it's pure Islam. We can talk legitimately about political Islam. We can talk legitimately about the use of violence in Islam and the use of religious violence in general. But none of that changes the fact that these words that we are hearing, these accusations that we are hearing, is part of a very long history of bigotry, racism, and xenophobia that has always been part of the American experience and may always be part of that experience. What do you say to the legions of Muslim Americans who would listen to your message and say, she is, she, she is at war with us? Oh, no, no. Um, would they say that to me on 9-11? Would they say that to me in 1993 when they hit the towers? Would they say it then? I'm just curious. This is what Geller and her followers do so effectively. They point to the most extreme, hateful forms of Islam they can find. And they say, that's the real Islam. That's what's coming to destroy us. Both here and abroad, it's a movement that's gaining steam. The word Islam translated means surrender, it means submit. So you submit to Islam, you surrender to Islam. Well, we're not going to submit to Islam, we're not going to surrender to Islam, never.